Hey crafters, it's me Jen Evers with Quality Crafts. And if you go go on over to our Quality Crafts Facebook page, you'll find out that we have a bunch of swaps that are starting very soon. The one that I'm most excited about is the envelope swap, which is basically a decorated envelope. I don't know how many she's going to decide that we are swapping. But make sure that when you're doing that, you save a spot for the address so they can actually be used. I'm thinking in my mind that we would do some stamping on there, some coloring on there, maybe a little bit of either wet or dry embossing and just make them look really, really cool and artsy. Grab your supplies if you're going to craft along with me and let's get started. The envelopes that I'm using today are six and a half by five and a quarter. So they're just oversized for an A2 size card and I'm okay with that. I've got four different shapes that I've cut out or punched out and attached together that's going to go on the front of the envelope to save that part where I'm going to write the address. My first idea, I'm going to use a bike stamp from this Dear Lizzie set. And because they're acrylic um, see-through stamps, I'm going to go ahead and season it with, with my um, sandpaper here. And I'm going to do it real lightly across the whole thing. And you'll notice that it's kind of turning a fuzzy fuzzy, um, not even a color, just kind of a gray look. This is going to help the ink stick to this stamp and give me a much darker impression than it would if I hadn't. And hopefully the ink won't pull up on top of that stamp. I'm going to do the same thing for the little mark that goes behind the bike to make sure it looks like it's speeding across the envelope. And I'm going to use my Tuxedo Black ink by, by Memento. I'm going to put the bike on this side. Not too bad. Could have been a little bit darker, but I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to go ahead and do the little curly cue behind it. So it looks like it's just taken off. And then I'm going to do a second generation. So it looked like it came on the page and went speeding across. Now for this one, I want to have like a box for the address in the middle, and I'm just going to freehand this. I want it to look kind of like a rectangle, but more of a whimsical one. So I'm going to draw out what I think is kind of a rectangle here, best I can. And then I'm going to do one of those lines that kind of goes over and under, but it's not perfect. That looks cool. That's exactly how I had hoped it would turn out. Now I'm going to use a marker, a Spectrum Noir IG4, to create a little bit of ground here so it doesn't look like my bicycle is floating. And edge it off the page here. Let me make sure I'm in, yep, I'm in frame so you can see the whole thing. So it looks like it's coming like off of a path and up onto this little road here. You can get a lot fancier than that, but that is a very simple one to start out with. Make your box for your address and just add something simple on the bottom. Okay, for this next envelope, I'm going to actually cover up where I want with a piece of cardstock that I put some ATG tape on and then I just have run it up and down my my hairy arms so that it doesn't stick to it and rip the paper off when I'm done stamping over the top of it. And I'm just going to choose to do this kind of right in the center here and then we'll do some stamping and coloring. This flower came from the Paper Studios, a set from them, and I'm going to attempt to use some Tim Holtz Distress inks in picked raspberry and peeled paint, and to the best of my ability here, just add that um, picked raspberry to the flower itself, and then the peeled paint, which is a green, to the bottom part, which is the stem and the leaves. Try to make sure that I'm in focus here. And I'm going to do two generations because I want to take advantage of the two step inking. I'm going to put one up here so that you can see almost the whole flower. And then I'm going to turn around and do a lighter version of it in the other corner. Okay. 
If anyone's curious about why I have these little felt pieces within my inks, it does nothing for the ink itself. It's for me to be able to find them later when I want to use my Ranger ink um, tool. It looks like this, and it's got a Velcro on it, so that I can go and pick that up and then do the edges with a color like that, which I might do to this one yet. I just haven't quite made up my mind yet. I want to add more flowers. I don't think that's enough, so I really am going to clean this off, and I want to add another color. I was thinking yellow, but I'm thinking now like maybe I want blue, so I'm going to use this blueprint sketches, even though this is a super, super dark color. I'm going to try it out anyway. So take, you know, take all your stuff and play around with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is really a great time to make your experiments because it's an envelope. It's not a card. I don't know why that just makes more sense to me. You're not getting, you're not blowing up a card and the envelope's going to get tossed away. Possibly the card would get saved. So this would be a super time to just go for it and have a lot of fun with this. I'm going to peel up the center and see what we've got left here. Definitely have a lot of center space to do any kind of um, um, address writing here. And then on the back, since we've got extra room, you could always use this also as a card for another um, a card for another card. A piece for another card is what I'm trying to say. But since I have this out already, I'm going to go ahead and ink this one again, and I'm going to give the back of the envelope another shot. Now, sometimes in my videos, I go all out, and I show you from beginning to end, and I get I do elaborate things and put it all together. But most of the time when I'm showing you how to do something, I'm showing you in a brief way of how to get something done and then I'm letting the rest of it go to your imagination so it can be completely and uniquely yours. That turned out really cool. Here's another cool way of decorating them if you don't have any specialty things but you have border stamps. These came from Clearly Inspired by Paper Inspirations and I'm just going to make this a very elegant black and white envelope. So I'm going to ink this all up in black. And you can mask off too if you don't want these going over, but I'm just going to go ahead and just go with what I have right now as is. I put down that box that I had before right here. And I'm just going to go around this box with these. First I'm going to do the top and the bottom and see how I like the look of that. And then I'm thinking, do I want to put some more in there? I certainly can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe off some of this and just ink up about two flowers worth. And put those two flowers like right there on the edge. And they're going to overlap some. That didn't work out too bad. I'm going to try that again on the other side. And hopefully it'll give it the illusion that it continued all the way around. Okay, and then I'm going to lift this box where we put the address in the middle. That turned out pretty neat. And then on this lip on the back, we'll make it match. You could always go back through here and add colors if you've got Copic markers or colored pencils or Spectrum Noirs like I use. And add a little color here and there in between those black little branches and flower and the petals and leaves. So it would look really cool. to get a little bit more creative <laughs> by using May May Made It set called Blessings and it's got these really awesome little um, leaves down here. 
So I also used a stamp that I have, um, a punch I mean, that does these leaves and I doubled up the leaf right over the top of it of itself and just put a little bit of that AT jig in. I put it on my skin so it wouldn't be so sticky that when I take it off it doesn't rip my envelope. And I'm using that as a mask for right where I want to put the address. And then I'm going to stamp some of these leaves around it. And when I'm done with that, we're going to color them in using watercolor. So this time I'm going to use Stays On Black Ink. I'm just going to vary where I put them. Some up, some down, one side and the other. And make sure I get a few of each kind on here. But I want them to really overlap the place where I'm going to put my address. I really want that overlapped look. Now they're also going to go be going around and off the page as well. And then I'm going to add some of these little teeny ones because I want some greenery in there. I'm not going to make them all fallish color. Some of them are still going to be a little bit green and I'm thinking in my mind that these little ones would take on that color. Now hopefully if I give this enough time to dry we won't get any bleeding when I put the watercolor on there. And all I do, if you do this right away instead of waiting like I did and you just rub these that um, alcohol, I mean, permanent ink from the stays on will wipe right off of these. I just happen to let them sit too long. You have to do it immediately. But alcohol will also take it off. So now I'm going to get out my Tim Holtz Distress inks that I have laying around here. Like I said, I want those to be green. I'm going to give this a little shot of heat from my heat gun just because I want to make sure that it is dry. Okay, now I'm going to give it a shot. Now, if this doesn't turn out exactly the way I'd hoped, I'm not going to worry about it. We're just having fun, playing around, being creative. And I've got my water dish off screen here right next to me. I'm going to push this card up so I'm not out of screen for you. I'm just going to put some watercolor green into those leaves, the little ones. I'm going to leave the green there just in case I want to add it to one or more of the other ones. But I want some of the leaves to have a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red and maybe run together slightly. So I might add a little bit of both of them. And I have the pink on reserve just in case I don't like how they're turning out. So the red and the orange together. And I'm just dipping my brush back into the water to bring out just the red and then adding a little bit of that orange back in. You know, back and forth. However, however it looks good to you, it's going to be your art. I think I am going to add just a little bit of green to this one. Now hopefully I didn't add too much um, too much water that it's going to seep right underneath that uh, mask I just put on here because I wasn't real super careful about that. But we're going to want to give that a chance to dry. I don't want to wait so let's blast it with the heat gun. <laughs> Okay, I think I want to do one more thing. I'm going to take that dark blue that I have here. It's called Blueprint Sketch. I better cover up my other one too. And I'm going to really water that down. Because I want 
<clears throat> the box for the address to stand out, I'm going to find the edge of that, where that let, let off, and I hope that makes sense to you. Um, and just go around it and around some of these leaves so it looks like there's a little bit of blue sky around there. Hopefully that will give us a more perfect image, a perfect square or rectangle. Well, it was a rectangle, but in this one, it's actually the, the shape of the leaves. I really want that to show up. I dipped into a couple of other um, colors here too, just so it doesn't look perfect. Watercolor never, rarely does, right? <laughs> And I think I'm going to continue it just a little bit out to the sides of the envelope, too. This one will definitely have to wait for it to dry before we can use it. I might hit it with the heat gun as well. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this color because I like things quick and easy. And I want to see the reveal. So let's wipe that down. I seem to have misplaced my little drying towel. If you know me from other um, videos, I usually have a piece of old toilet paper roll that had some uh, paper left on it. Look at that. See, it looked like it was clean, but it wasn't. I didn't want to set my envelope on there, but I got a little bit of watercolor on the back. That's okay. So when we peel this up, look at that. We've got this really cool striking center. That's really fun. Now, if you have the patience and you want to pull this out and do some more on the flap, you can certainly go for it. So there is another idea. Now, this one I have not pre-planned, other than the fact that I cut out, I punched out this circle and this flower, which I chopped in half and put half of the flower on each side. And I really feel like playing with my... Um, brayer so I'm going to go ahead and just bray some color onto this and I'm using that same bright picked raspberry and I'm just going to put it on here and I'm going to do the bumping technique where you just bump and move the paper and then I'm going to brayer that off and before I switch colors I want to have a baby wipe to wipe that off with. Now this is a technique that I have not used before. I've seen it done eons ago, so I'm sorry if I can't credit the exact person I saw it from. It's most likely on one of those uh, videos where they give you tips and techniques on all kinds of things you can do with a brayer. So if you want to find out more about that, go ahead and look that up. But now I'm going to do it like from the middle. And I'm going to wipe that color off as well. And then a color that goes along well with both of these would be yellow. So I'm going to I'm going to go back to that light color I had. Wild honey. And I'm going to do this one straight across and see what kind of mixing of colors we get. They react with water. I'm going to spray a little water on here. You can really start to see a halo around there. That's cool. Now my brain is starting to tell me I should stamp like some really dark black images over the top and make that a 
a superficial background, but we'll see. I want to go ahead and I want well, actually I want to clean this up real quick, and then I want to peel that off and show you the reveal. And it's still really wet, but hopefully it'll come up easy. That's neat. So you could flick paint. You could use these kind of tools to rub on your color. I like the look of that one. You could also add it to the back if you want to as well. I still have some people in the back of my mind that I just know are shouting, I don't have anything fancy, Jen. I just have inks. And maybe you just have some little inks or some of those little eye inks. What do you call those? Those little... I can't remember, but they look like they're shaped like little eyes. Anyway, or you don't have any special tools. Just take your inks and just go straight to paper. Mix it up around, you know, put one next to them. Not quite next to them, whatever you want to do. Pick some colors that you really like or that the one that maybe the friends you're sending to really likes and just make it up as you go it doesn't have to be perfect after all this is our art our creativity all i'm doing now here as i add more is just trying to stay away from the color that i had already done like, I don't want the same color next to the exact same color. So I'll try my best to move them around some. Do two or three of each kind. Until I get most of the page or all of the page filled. It's totally up to you. You know, how does it look to you? Do you want to leave some of it blank? Do you want to fill the whole thing in? It doesn't matter. I'm looking at the holes here and what colors I'm missing. And that's how I'm choosing what to put where. I already have, let's see, I don't have purple down here. So I'm going to put purple there. Uh, purple could go there. I have those three. So maybe one more of the wild honey. I don't think I did say what colors these were. So let's go over them. I did wild honey. Peacock Feathers, Dusty Concord, and Worn Lipstick. And those were just the first four fun colors I noticed that I had laying over on my little um, stackable thing that I keep them on. And I'm just going to peel this. You could keep that on there. It looks kind of cool, but I want to do the reveal because that's my favorite part. Now that one was quick and simple. No real tools needed. And how awesome is that? And I think since I have these colors out, I'm going to go ahead and do this back flap here and just do some on the edges. How cool is that? Now from the one that I just did, because I didn't muck up the whole center of this, I go ahead and I did ATG tape on the whole back side. I can go ahead and just put this right down on an envelope. And that's it. That one is finished and ready to go. And it's just something fun to look at when you're getting mail. And then you can put your own little decorated thing up here. And you're good to go. So in review, we did a simple one. With the bicycle. A masked off one with um, dual toned or dual colored stamps. And the back side. Making a border around a masked center. And adding it to the flap. 
This one is my ultimate favorite. There was a masked off set of leaves in the center and we did watercoloring on here and we used all of these little stamps from a May May Made It set called Blessings. This one we had fun with brayering. A super simple one for those of you with no tools but you have a lot of teeny tiny inks. And we added it to, to the flap. And then we used what was left over from that last one to just put a real simple one right in the center. I really enjoy playing around with the things that I have to make decorated envelopes. And if you enjoy my Wednesday 5-Minute Card Series or you enjoyed this video or there's some other videos that you've enjoyed in the past, if you would just think about pressing that subscribe button down in the corner there, I would be so appreciative. Come join us over at the Koala Tea Crafts page on Facebook, and I'll see you guys next video.